So if you had to say, just based on your own experience, how does Russell Brand treat women? I mean, for instance, did you ever did you ever experience any of what you would term abuse from him or any sexual assault or anything like that? Do you recognize these behaviors? It's easy to believe for the brainwashed public to think, well, I saw him in a movie act like that, and I saw him on a talk show act like that. So that must be who he is. First and foremost, what disturbs me the most is who are these people? Right now, he is having to fight ghosts, faceless, nameless people. And that's why I felt it was so important to come forward, to put a real name and a real face, the real human being that knows him. There are some who say, oh, Russell Brand, he's just a narcissist and he's putting on a good show for everyone. And he knew that he had to change his image. I've had people say to me, I think it's all just an act. It's just BS. It's not genuine. He's just a narcissist playing a game. Was that your experience? All right. Well, I know everyone's aware of the allegations that have been in the news recently about Russell Brand. And I thought it would be really helpful to try to find out more about him and his character, who he is. And I happened to have a friend who knew someone who had seen Russell romantically for a year, uh, his former lover, and had some insights on him. And this woman is reluctant, was reluctant to come forward. She is not seeking PR or anything like that. In fact, we'll talk about it in a moment. She's really been off the radar, uh, apparently in the jungle on a spiritual trek uh, for a while and really has doesn't really know a lot about what's been going on lately with Me Too and everything. But she does have a number of things to say about Russell Brand and her experiences with Russell Brand and what's been going on lately regarding him. So I wanted to introduce her. She is actually you are a like a certified uh, reverend, right? You go by Reverend Starchild? Yes, I am actually an ordained minister, not of Christian faith, non-denominational. Now, you were a headlining burlesque dancer, burlesque artist in L.A., in Las Vegas. So, please give a round of applause for the sweetheart of the striptease, Hallie DeMar. <laughs> You worked at what apparently is a really famous um, burlesque theater in L.A. It was called what? I worked at Beecher's Madhouse when I was home in L.A. not on tour, which was pretty much an A-list celebrity night spot that was run by Jeff Beecher, Kelly Osborne, David Arquette were all involved in that. And it was really in that era where everyone was was going. So I was headlining there also when I would be in town, not on the road or in Vegas. Yeah, you are extremely well connected to and, and have met known a lot of celebrities over the years. And you are definitely the real deal when it comes to burlesque from what I hear and, and as a mm. performance artist. And so we were connected actually by and she told me, I have a friend who is romantically involved with Russell Brand for a year, and she has a lot of opinions about him and his character and what's been going on, but she's reluctant to come forward. Would you, would you like to at least get in touch with her and talk off record? And so you and I talked. Now, I did put some effort into confirm that you were indeed in a romantic relationship with Russell Brand over an extended period of time in 2012, 2013, and, uh, and confirmed from some people in Hollywood. Hollywood. And one of the things, too, that I was really delighted to find was an old yes. post with a photo of Russell Brand and a friend of yours taken by you that confirms the exact story that you told me and that you're going to tell us about how your romantic relationship with Russell Brand began. And so I'm just curious, I know my audience is, just to see what, what you have to say about him. Wonderful. Thank you so much, first and foremost, for having me and for the work that you're doing truly for the truth movement. And this is why I've chosen to come forward because I truly have had enough of what is going on out there in the media and cancel culture, the entertainment industry, you know, all these talking heads that are being paid to lie on camera. 
in the media, it is enough is enough. He might have a certain reputation that was he was also paid to have. He was paid to be in movies to behave a certain way. On talk shows, he would act a certain way. And so he was never, in my opinion, hiding who he was. And also what we saw out there was an act. Mm -hmm. who I saw at home alone and private was a beautiful man that was in the midst of clearing through his sex addiction. He said that he, he was, was in the, really in the, still in the throes of his sex addiction, but he was working on climbing out of that. Is that about right? Or where was he at? Yeah. What I would say was, uh, first of all, I met Russell at, after a self-help meeting for addiction introduced by a friend and so that's how we first met, but didn't connect then. So I already knew that he was working on himself in his, his substance abuse. And he was sober at the time when we did meet. People do change. And so this is why it's really near and dear to my heart. Because when I did find out about this on late Saturday night, my heart was truly hurt as someone who has recovered. So for me, I really had a soft spot in my heart for Russell, and I really understood him where he was at. And I saw a man who was really, truly working on himself. What would you say your relationship with him was like? I'm not asking, like, you know, was he exclu your exclusive or anything like that. Right. I'm just saying, like, what was the feel of being in a relationship with Russell Brand at that time in 2020? 12, 2013. And I would like to clarify, I'm not claiming that I was in an exclusive relationship or even dating Russell, because to me, dating implies that we were going out in public, which our relationship was that of lovers, very much in private. However, I would say it was a beautiful friendship. We had deep conversations. He would talk to me about wanting to have children one day, and he would talk about some of the things that he's talking about now in a, a much smaller scale, but I could tell that he was in a point where he was opening up that he had seen what he could never unsee about the entertainment industry. And he was truly on a trajectory forward to also make it clear. I'm not claiming I was his girlfriend. We were right. lovers. But I think with you, you know, you're not trying to blow anything up out of proportion to what it was. You just want to say, Hey, this is my experience with him in a romantic context and, and as a good as a friend for for over a year I, I witnessed and experienced him being very honest with me very transparent things that would embarrass other people he was always someone that wore his heart on his sleeve and his truth was always what he spoke and that is the type of person that I stand up for and that's why I'm standing up for him now because Anyone who has had addiction problems, he's an easy scapegoat in this situation because everybody knows because he's been honest about it. He's written about it. He's played the characters, which I also think is what is damning him ultimately, mm -hmm. because it's easy to believe for the brainwashed public to think, well, I saw him in a movie act like that. And I mm -hmm. saw him on a talk show act like that. So that must be who he is. But that was his character. Mm -hmm. Were there shreds of that as his personality in real life? Yeah. He's a fun, funny guy that is wild and eccentric. But he did not behave like that off camera. Mm. And I just want to make that clear that there are other people that I know who their characters were the ones that ultimately got them buried in the Me Too movement because they played a slimy guy and they were not that in real life, such as Russell. So if you had to say, just based on your own experience, how does Russell Brand treat women? I mean, because you, you talk about how, well, he's not like his persona. He's not like his character, although a little strands of that can, can cross over into his life. I think people would probably want to know more specifically what we're talking about. For instance, did you ever, did you ever experience any of what you would term abuse from him or any sexual assault or anything like that? Do you recognize these behaviors? Thank you for asking that question so outright. No, absolutely not. I never recognized, witnessed, or experienced any kind of abusive, violent, or manipulative energy or behavior with Russell 
sexually or anything peripheral within that whole scope of whatever people are saying, I did not experience witness any of that. It was completely consensual. And I can tell you, Russell did not need to force himself on anyone. If someone didn't want to have sex with him, he would just call somebody else. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I'm telling you, he had plenty of women that he could have called upon. He did not need to force anybody. So I absolutely never, never experienced or saw him treat me or anyone or any other woman around me in that way. And I was in a scenarios where there were other women around and there was nothing abusive. So what do you think when you see what's happening now and you see the, I know they're anonymous, mostly anonymous allegations against him, but you see and hear these allegations. Um, how do you make sense of that? Or do you, do you believe them or do you not believe them? Or what are your thoughts? What disturbs me the most is who are these people? Right now he is having to fight ghosts, mm. faceless, nameless people that we don't know if, first of all, if they exist. This is well known that the UK is able to keep all accused accusers or accusations anonymous and i think this and first and foremost which is why i really wanted to speak about this is a law that has to change because this is not an even playing field here and this is not a game we're not playing these are people's lives these are people's families these are people's careers and integrity hard earned hard-earned reputations like he's really worked hard to change his life and it's not right that he has to now go through this with we don't even know who these people are i truly feel if someone is going to accuse someone of anything especially something so horrid and malicious as rape and sexual assault that they must also come forward to be spoken to this is not okay. And this is how Me Too has gotten completely out of control. And this is dangerous for women who are truly being abused. This is dangerous for women who are truly being raped. And there are plenty of them out there. On my post, I had the most response about women who were coming forward saying that they were, they were also abused in the past by other people but that they were taking it very personally that I was speaking up for him. Mm. And for me, the fact of the matter remains is here I am a real person in, in your face. I have a name and you can talk to me. And where are those people? Mm -hmm. Where are those people that are saying what they're saying about him? And that's why I felt it was so important to come forward, to put a real name and a real face, the real human being that knows him and, and, be strong in my truth and say, where are you? And I, I, I question if this is all, and my feeling truly is that this is the media, possibly even the government behind this, because he is a truth teller. He has been blowing the whistle on all the systems for years. But I wanted to try to get a little more clarity though on, on one particular thing that I think is going to be the thing that people keep going back to for with this interview, this, this question, mm -hmm. when you said that when you knew him, he was undergoing a, a transformation and that there were some things that he was starting to put behind him. Is it possible that before he knew you, people will say, well, okay, then maybe he was assaulting these other women. And then he met you and turned over this new leaf. Is it conceivable to you that the person you knew could have, could have been this narcissistic, horrible guy attacking women? That's a really good question. And this has been the question that's been brought up to me a lot in this past week. Just because he treated you well, how do you know that he didn't treat other people that way? And if I'm honest, I, I don't know. I know that drugs and alcohol, I know I did a lot of things when I was drinking and doing that I am not proud of, that were not my character, that were not even remotely who I am. And that's my personal experience. Things I've been told in blackouts that I did, it's mortifying. So I'm not going to sit here and claim that Russell, who is admittedly an addict 
and recovered at that, didn't do anything that was off color or, or wrong. I don't feel he is one that is an attacker or an abuser. I don't feel that he would lie if he were, tr if he truly had done anything. I feel he would be honest. And I think it's important to note that you were with Russell Brand from 2012 to 2013, and that 2012 is when some of the alleged events occurred, some of the allegations against him. So to those who might say, well, you were just with him after he had reformed, you don't know the real him or the person, the guy who was, these, these things were alleged about, well, that's actually not the case. So the question is here, what are people really calling for? They're trying to destroy someone's life who's already gone through, in my opinion, the punishment of mm -hmm. being in the hell of being an addict for a lifetime and succumbing that, overcoming that, rising above that, and then also doing so much good for the world. I don't know what possible punishment anybody could think of or want for him that would even be warranted. I feel whatever he might have done in the past, he's already done his community service, in my true opinion. I think there's something really important that you can speak to here with a lot of authority. And this is something that I, other people have brought up. I, I've gotten this question. There are some who say, oh, Russell Brand, he's just a narcissist. He's even said it before, although that's part of his persona again. So we have to really right. disentangle the persona from the reality. But people say, oh, Russell Brand is just a narcissist and he's putting on a good show for everyone. And he knew that he had to change his image from the Randy reprobate to this newly enlightened family man. And that I, I've had people say to me, I think it's all just an act. It's just BS. It's not genuine. He's just a narcissist playing a game. Was that your experience? Because it doesn't sound like it. Thank you. That's a really amazing point. And that's a great question that I know is a lot on a lot of people's minds who are not in their heart to actually believe that people on their own volition change and that they want to change and that they want to change for themselves. First of all, I believe that the man that we see and hear and witness and are you and I defending at this moment and speaking about Russell Brand is a man of true heart, integrity. I do not believe it's an act. I can almost wholeheartedly say it's not an act because I can see who's who out here. And I know who the good people are, who the people that are telling the truth. And those are the only people I align with. I'm a reverend. I am the vice president of a church. I am not someone who's going to come stand up for someone that I think is full of shit, excuse my language, but someone that's lying. I'm not going to put what I, the work that I'm doing, which is the intention of good of humanity, out there if I feel somebody is not a good person. I'm not going to stand up for a nefarious person. Yeah.